This has been the journey so far. A grand arena gilded by blood, a giant slain, a toll paid in full. But before the king will help our rider, he must have his dead court. Hey everybody, Kalosan again here with episode 23 of the Darksiders 2 100% walkthrough. In the last episode, we got the first soul in the fair in the not the Pharisees, the Judicator's tomb, as well as everything leading up to it, because there's a number of things that we could get before actually entering the tomb. This episode, we are hopefully going to finish the tomb, but we'll see what time permits. Number eight out of ten, Book of the Dead page, right off the bat. How awesome is that? Although to be fair, I did kind of leave it hanging for the next episode in 21, or excuse me, in 22, but whatevs. All right, so in here we got some cool stuff, in addition to that Book of the Dead page. All right, so like I said, in addition to the Book of the Dead page, we got a relic and some chests. So don't drop down there yet. Don't do it! Just drops you back down to the beginning of it. Go over here, lift this up. Not lift it, pop over. Yeah. And then go get this Jesse chest. And then drop down one level and get yourself a relic of A2 Goth. And then drop down another level to get yourself absolutely nothing, but that's how you get back up. Okay, mm, okay. And now we can go get the second soul in the, you guessed it, the second tower. But first we have to get the very well hidden, not really, shadow key. Excuse me, skeleton key. I always do that, skeleton key. Eat hammer. <laughs> don't stand a chance, do you? No, you don't. No, you don't. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. You're about to get murdered. Well, that was easy. All right. So up here on this balcony, we have ourselves the uh, skeleton. I'm sure it will, but right now you can't hit me because I'm in front of a chest opening it, so I'm invincible. Nan and a boo boo. Although that invincibility is about to disappear. Alright, let's prepare ourselves. Let's do this! Oh, yeah, that's right. You hit nothing but air. Because I could freeze time, and I guess you didn't hit air that time. She so totally hit me! No, I totally dodged that time. That was BS. And now you're gonna die. And that should not have happened. You came out of nowhere. Let's not let the camera fuck us up, please. Okay, where are you? There we go. That was fun. Okay. Let's go grabby grab ourselves another trusty chest. Spell touch face. I cannot. You cannot. But now you can. <laughs> there we go. I guess auto loot also picks up potions, which is nice. The hyper useful Reaper arms. But now, I know it was tempting, but now you can drop down the hole. You're welcome. You're welcome. The place is right in front of the door. Perfect. Now we gotta run to the shadow key door, skeleton key door. Good thing it's not very far. However, there are some warriors to fight. You're nothing too bad. Then you can go fight those guys if you want, but I'm just gonna shove this thing and violate this skull. Skull. You know what? I feel terrible just thinking it, but I thought it. And I think it's funny, so I'm gonna say it. And there's a button coin that we're gonna grab on our way down, and that is we are skull fucking, literally skull fucking, 
That skull. There, I said it. I'm a terrible person. Anyway, so there's a Book of the Dead page right there. However, we're going to again grab that on our way down. Not grab it now, because it's just a pain in the ass to try to grab it now. You can use Death Grip and try to, like, edge the edge of that... Of that, like, metal beam, but it really doesn't make any sense. So you can just grab it on your way down. Jump backwards. And, ooh, here's soul number two, stuck in a cage. Just like soul number one, at the top of a tower. So again, Judicator, why can you not give this yourself? All right, so, Undead Prowlers. If you know, if you've been watching these videos, you know that Prowlers are probably my least favorite enemy. And these ones are even worse because they have like a slight invulnerability period when they power up like that. In which case they start doing more damage. No, you don't. No! I totally blame that on the camera. Not my fault at all. So, Nightmare players, if you were playing this along, you know, for blow for blow, you would have to die and that would be the end. However, since you are not me, and you can use this as like a warning device, don't get caught in a corner with the two skeleton warriors and the prowler. All right, all right. And let's try this again. And also, for the record, if I ever post a nightmare run, which I'm not going to, because I'm not fucking insane, I'm not going to be commentating, because there, I know there's no way that I'll survive. And for the record, I'll look at the stats page after this. That is my first death. First and only death due to combat so far. No, you, stop, move! Jesus Christ, you know what? I, I'm just tired of this shit. I don't ever use Reaper form, like, not enough, so I'm just going to use it for the stupid fucking bitch fights. Heal, heal, heal! Move, move, move! Alright. Can't believe I had to resort to use Reaper form just for that fucking fight, but I just really don't want to deal with that shit. Alright, so we got that. Now we need to go drop down and get ourselves Book of the Dead page. And I, people still ask me, like, what difficulty I'm on. No, this isn't fucking Nightmare. I'm not going to try to upload something. I'm not going to try to do 100% walkthrough on Nightmare while I'm actually recording on Nightmare, because that's fucking stupid. Okay? Seriously, it's fucking stupid, because if some stupid mistake like that happens, then suddenly all the work I've done so far goes down the fucking shitter. So, no. No, 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 no. So we drop down, get ourselves a chesty chest. And I'm so sorry for bitching at you guys. You know, I just need to rant. I need to vent a little bit. That's all. That's all. And then easily edge here and just try to fall like right down the side. Boom. And get ourselves Book of the Dead page. Number 19. And then we also get ourselves Bowman Coin number 66. All right. And then we head back. We also have, you might notice, the soul's kind of hanging around our left hand. I thought we thought that was kind of cool. Too bad we never get more than one at a time, and we can only see one hanging out. But yeah, I'm just thinking. Okay, boom. See that? I didn't even like take any damage that time. That was easy. Okay. Alrighty then. Cross the way and go back to the central room once again. Judgment is at hand. Humans, always so frightened. See your life as you truly live. Fun fact, I don't think it's possible to skip this, even though we have to see it three times.
I guess there must be three pretty bad dudes. They're definitely dudes if you look at the shape of the souls. And he's like, he was always so frightened. See your life as you truly lived. I guess they must have lived pretty shitty lives, man. I guess maybe that's why they're wandering. Although it does not again explain why they're out of the grass of the Judicator in his own domain. In his own freaking tomb. But yeah, you know what? I'll just stop bitching about it because I know it's not going to change anything. And it's probably not that interesting to hear me talk about the obvious over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Okay, let's summon up uh, I see a friend. And hey -o! Not only do we have the th Collect 3 mechanic, we have another elevator! Oh, goody, goody, goody! Ouch. Don't worry about hitting any switches right now, because you can't. However, you did just summon that Pharisee for very good reasons, that he acts like a fucking distraction for our undead general. And he'll charge him instead of us. That's always a good thing. Summon some more... Oh, he's that. Oh, so he's online. Ah! Oh. Oh, totally not necessary, but freaking awesome. All right. And our... Oh, he's still alive. Good for you, sir. Good for you. Oh, we are in one. I guess we're in two. All right, because we're going up. Ha, that makes sense. Okay. But hold on. We're stuck. Well, I guess we're going to have to solve this pickle as well. All right, let's solve this. Okay, so there's two different ways you can go. One direction you can climb, one direction you cannot. You want to set it on the one that you can not climb. Because that'll open the opposite gate right up there. Which is where we're going to climb up to. And then when we step on this one, it'll show us that... And unlocks this gate. So that means we're gonna have to send the Ferris here over to that one in a little bit once we reach the other side. Of course, we gotta pop, pop our way across. Before we jump, before we pop some more, we gotta send our buddy over to here. He already knows what it does, and we know that he's doing it because he said, "As you wish." We do not have to watch him do it. We can just assume that's going to get done. And guess what? It is because the gate is down. Although I'm not quite sure what the purpose of this gate was, because this corruption is not natural. It's not like we know corruption is going to grow here, and then that'll, that'll allow them to. I don't know. I always ask that kind of question, and for some reason that kind of thing always seems to bother me, even though it's really not important. I know video games do that kind of shit all the time, but hey. And yes, we're just going to leave him down there, because we're about to de-summon him, and get ourselves the third tower. So down there is another Boatman coin, but just like before, we're going to get it on our way down. It just makes more sense. However... I'm going to loop around and get ourselves Book of the Dead page number 20. And Book of the Dead chapter number 2. Which means after this fine little show in the Judicator tomb, we'll be able to go visit the death tomb number 2 here in the Kingdom of the Dead underneath. That's right. The Lair of the Deposed King. And it's just like, oh! All right, well, that's no fight. Well, that was easy. Well, I guess I'll just grab this stone bite. Stone of the Mystic. I guess I'll just waltz on out of here. Awesome, man. That was easy. Wait a minute. That was a trap, wasn't it? All right, so there's two different ways you can handle the Bone Keeper. Although this is like the easiest boss in the fucking game. So you can either shoot him with Redemption or you can equip death grip and launch yourself up here 
And feel free to take out some some skeletons, because, you know, why the hell not? So easy anyway. You know, kind of rebuild your stats, assuming you have, like, you know, wrath on kill and health on kill sorts of stats. Oh, um, let's switch back. No, 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 no. No, you're not going to kill me. Nope. I know you think you are, but you're not. All right. You guys think you're so clever. Well, you're not. You're not. Like, oh, that was easy, boss. Okay, let's waltz out of here. Nope. Now we got the Bone Giant, which is kind of like Nashor meets the Ice Giant in terms of, like, attack style and animation and sounds. Not a really odd mix, actually. All right, so you just got to dodge out of his moves and then whack at him. Pretty straightforward. He needs more wrath. He does have that neck attack, which is unique. But, however, that's his only unique attack. Otherwise, this happens. Which is exactly how we killed Nashor. Alright. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Or not quite. That's it for the souls. We still have the Boatman coin down here to get. Number 67, as well as the two chests that were down there, like, in the entrance room. But, of course, we got to ride our elevator downstairs. And then we're going to talk to Belgrim, get ourselves a bone key. And go visit the second death tomb. And then we're going to go back to the Eternal Throne and do more vendor stuff. Fun, fun. <laughs> Loading! And of course, we got to walk our way all the way around. Well, maybe not. Yeah, we do. Hey, buddy. Judgment is at hand. Humans. Maybe because he's the Reaper, so he's the only one that can like, collect souls. Maybe that's it, but then I really don't know how... You know, the Judicator can do his job very well the unless... Death is there to like, do half the work for him. Uh, yeah. Stop servant. it. Stop it, Cuddle's not not important. Not important. And now we got you bitch number two. Excuse me. Nephilim. Dead Lord number two. You may be a horseman, and here is future bitch number three. Dead. And your king demands an audience. This realm belongs to on top of being a bitch, now. he is can stand against it. a you arrogant asshole. Misjudge me. You ride without the power of the seals at your back. You would not survive even so the let's talk about that for a second. That's actually kind of an interesting idea throughout this. Is that this is a personal quest of death? He's not no doing anything for the council. He's not doing anything to right the balance. He's literally trying just to save his brother, which means that he's not an ultimate you know enforcer of the balance, which is what he is if he's doing something for the council. If the seals give him power, and also kind of an issue of the game where if you remember at the end of Darksiders 1. Spoilers! At the end of Darksiders 1, there was this idea that war dies, and then the Seventh Seal gets broken, and then he comes back to life. And then, for some reason, this confused a lot of people, but to me, it makes perfect sense. Because there's always going to be four horsemen. When the seal is broken, the four horsemen of the apocalypse ride. It's not that he's getting revived, it's not that he's being summoned, it's that he just is. When the seals are broken, the four horsemen of the apocalypse ride. The four horsemen of the apocalypse, and Darksiders anyway, are war, death, strife, and fury. So no matter what the, the form of their current bodies are, they will be summoned again and they'll come back to life. That's just the way of it. Okay, so let's go downstairs. 
and get ourselves those chests. But first we have to come up here and summon our two souls. Two bitches. Hey bitches, come on bitches. Let's go bitches. I got two bitches. I brought two bitches to my prom. Alright, so... One there. And one there. As you and again, I cannot confirm this myself, and I really feel like this was not the case when I did it myself a while back. But apparently, these doors will open, those gates will open automatically once after you lose interdiction. That they'll just open because they otherwise there's no way to access them. So yeah, if you missed them, don't worry. But anyone can confirm or deny this. If anyone can confirm or deny this, feel free, because I just don't know. Okay. So no, we're not going to go back to the Eternal Throne. We are going to go to Fulgrim. All right, so we're going to sell our bone key to, or sell our chapter to, what's his face? The very, very wonderful Fulgrim. And then we're going to go to the Death Tomb and discuss the Demon Heart Talisman, which we're going to get. So, let's sell the stuff. I have new items. If you have the coin. I don't really want to. Okay, so I've been talking about these possessed weapons, these uh, 20 coins, 50,000 boxes, and then the legacy the legacy artifacts. So apparently they're bugs to get on the PC version. They weren't supposed to be there, at least not until the Argyle's Tomb DLC comes out. So they're not going to be out on the consoles until then. So honestly, I would almost save them because, except for maybe epics every once in a while, because it, it gives you a leveled item, wasting them on anything else really doesn't make any sense to me. It really doesn't. But certainly respect is definitely worth it. Okay, so first thing you want to do is sell some stuff in case you need to make room for a bug? bone key. In case you need to make room for the death tomb we're about to loot. I think I'm fine. I'll take a quick looky-loo. However, I think I'm fine. I just went the wrong direction. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's look at the stats. Ha! Oh, we're too, too far. Combat deaths. One. Ha! Suck on that. Okay. No. Okay. So, boom, boom. I'm usually fine. The only ones that I ever seem to be close on full stuff is either talismans or secondary weapons. So just take a look at those. And if you have like, you know, four or five slots, you should be fine. Okay, so we got the bone key. Now let's travel to the lair of the deposed king. All right, so we get to go all the way to the bottom of the tomb and go down some hella long stairs. I guess it's certainly better than going up the stairs, you know, a la Ghostbusters, but yeah. Well, I guess you could on your way back up, but it's much easier just to fast travel your way out, I must say. If the Ghostbusters had fast travel, psh, then it wouldn't be as funny. I guess it's the moral of this story. So we're holding on to our addiction for no particular reason. I guess we're actually going to have to equip Death Crypt for the tomb, so we're going to do that. All right, there we go. Section of the Lair to Post King, but that's not true. We're at the entrance of Death Tomb number two. And we already killed some of the skeletons down here. I guess not all of them. Come to life, you icy bastards. No, you're going to die faster than this. Yeah, you are. Come to life. Unhibernate so you can die. <laughs> okay. Alright, did we kill everything else? Yes, we did. We also got. There's also a power stone bite right there that we already got. Shove it in the mouth. And open up the door. Unfortunately, there's just not as epic music here as there is in the first death tomb. For whatever reason, I really don't know why. But before we do anything, 
We want to go over here and grab the demon heart talisman that's just hanging out. Floating magically. So this is a tough one to talk about because... As far as I could tell, no one's still quite sure what it does. It has something to do with possessed weapons, but otherwise it's up in the air. So this talisman is in the heart of is the heart of a demon lord, one of Lilith's rivals who ran afoul of your fur... Let's start over. This talisman is the heart of a demon lord, one of Lilith's rivals who ran afoul of her fury. Now, his once ambitious heart rewards whoever holds it by infusing common items, key there, with devouring spirits, increasing their value. Key there. Alright, so like I said, there's no official description anywhere. Not from devs, not on the website, not in any manual or anything about exactly what this demon heart does. So it's kind of like what the general consensus on the internet right now is that white items or common items become possessed weapons when they are dropped by either weapon racks or by chests, not necess not by mobs, although I can't confirm this either way and I've done my own test and I can't, I just can't figure that part out. But definitely the possessed weapons, the common weapons, and also what the description says. It says, infuses common items with devouring spirits. Devouring spirits being possessed weapons, because they, you know, devour items in order to to do stuff, to, to gain attributes, of course. You, know that. you see, I get there, I, got, I get a possessed weapon right there out of that weapon rack. So it's always a good idea to put on the demon heart before raiding a bunch of weapon racks or before raiding a bunch of chests, because it's always going to be more valuable. A possessed weapon is always going to be more valuable than a white one. However, it's not necessarily more valuable than, say, than, say, epic ones. And this is where the issue comes up, because the next kind of, the next talisman we get in the next dungeon, the, in, de sorry, not the dungeon, death tomb number three in the next death tomb, is something called the Horde Seeker, which increases the rate that epic or, or elite purple items are dropped by enemies. And these are arguably more valuable, because they're initially more valuable to Vulgrim, but also they contain the stats and the attributes that you want to put on your possessed weapons. So even if Demon Heart does, and again I can't confirm this either way, even if you, Demon Heart does affect possessed weapon drops from, from mobs, it's not necessarily what you want what you want to always have on once you get a Horde Seeker. Because I would rather get a bunch of epic and a bunch of purples than a bunch of possibly getting a bunch of random possessed weapons, at least from mobs. I'll, I'll always put on the demon heart before I raid a bunch of chests or weapon racks, though, because Horde Seeker only affects item drops from mobs. However, you don't always want to have that on because then you lose the bonus of what other talismans would give you. So I only really put it on when I'm fighting a bunch of low-level enemies and want to see if I can get some elite items and stuff like that. So in a nutshell, put on the Horde Seeker when you are fighting low-level enemies and you don't want the attribute bonus for another talisman, and always put on the Demon Heart before like raiding a huge group of Impossible. chests and weapon racks. I, I don't like switch it on for each chest and each weapon rack because then I'll be doing way too much and it just it would be stupid. All right, so you saw some guilt and gold or whatever coming out of the ground and a big old chest, which you get for destroying a bunch of the environment here inside the main room of the tomb. That's it for this episode. We're going to fast travel our way back to the Eternal Throne and sell some stuff, namely relics and do vendor trash. So that's it. Let's sell this relics to Ostagoth and then we're going to sign off. Come on, buddy. Talk to me, buddy. Come on. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Come on. Good for you. Okay, let's sell this stuff. Relic of Etu Goth, 6,000. Relic of Renegoth, 1035. And Relic of Kagoth, one skill point. Da 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 da! Alright. So that's it, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you like the spreadsheet guide, make sure to send me a PM if you're a subscriber, and I'll send that to you. Kind of lays out what I give each episode. If you like, like me on Facebook. It helps me out, as well as you'll stay in, in more constant communication as I'll be able to give you updates on the progress of the videos, and you'll be able to communicate with me a little bit more easily, if you wish. Anyway, again, thanks for watching. This has been Cuddle Snot, signing off, and I'm going to watch this fight. Apparently, he's in a very epic fight with air. And so is he. Or they're just demonstrating. I'll go with the first one. They're fighting air. Since they're dead and don't need to breathe it, they are at an immortal battle with oxygen. Yeah.
Alright, see you next time.